can you just describe how a resistance problem could potentially build up? Okay, well, I mean, I think a lot of people think that resistance just sort of spontaneously happens, but actually what's going on, uh, and this can apply to anthelmintics in animals, or it might apply to antibiotics in the human um, population and the bacteria that, that, that they're used against, that actually the parasites that you're dealing with have got some genes which confer resistance to the products that we're using. And at, over time, as you use those chemical products or antibiotics, you're selecting for the resistant ones and killing all the susceptible ones. So over time, and it might be months, it might be years, you will get a build-up of resistance. Anthelmintic resistance in the entire UK sheep flock, and especially where we are in this part of Wales, is, is now a massive problem. We know that, in, to one of the groups, the oldest group of anthelmintics, we know that we can pick up resistance on nearly 100% of lowland farms in England, for example. If we go looking for it, we will get less than 95% of the worms being killed by that drug now. The issue that we have, of course, is that at that level, the farmer is still getting quite good control. It's not until the product is only killing perhaps 50 or 60% of the worms, the farmer starts to think, hang on a minute, actually, this isn't working as well as it used to. And at that point, it's too late to go back. So we are trying to get farmers to realise that whilst it's not a problem for them now, they're getting nearer and nearer to that slippery slope and going into the red zone where there is no escape. It's probably one of the most significant problems that we've got that's pushing onto the UK flock now. If we look at other parts of the world, such as South Africa, there's parts where they can no longer keep sheep because all the worms are resistant to all the wormers. If they put sheep on the pasture, they die, and there's nothing they can do about it. If you talk to a lot of the scientists, a lot of the vets, they will tell you that worm resistance presents the, long, the biggest long-term challenge to the health of the flock that we face. What sort of resistance issues do you get in other parts of the world, South Africa, Australia, for instance? Very serious ones. I mean, New Zealand has a serious resistance problem of its own, which is worse than ours, but Australia would be worse still, and South Africa and South America have got huge problems vast areas where they can no longer keep productive farm animals because they cannot control the parasites. And, and that's the barrel of the gun we're looking down. If we can't have antimintics working in the UK, we're not going to be able to farm sheep across vast areas of the UK. Uh, with all sorts of implications for environmental, um, social, uh, all the other sorts of fabrics, not just animal production. So you know, we, we do have to take this very, very seriously. But the good news from the UK's point of view is that we're taking action now before it's too late, whereas our Antipodean friends, the South Africans and South Americans, really have gone over the precipice and you know, they've got big trouble. One of the partners in the practice has currently been doing some research involving DEFRA and other organisations uh, and has seen a tremendous amount of white drenched benzimidazole resistance in this area. Um, Something like 8 out of 10 farms had a very significant level of resistance to white drenches. Some of them also had resistance to the levamazoles or the yellow drenches. We didn't see any resistance to the clear drenches, the ivermectins, but then the tests which look for those resistances aren't as good. So that we know we've got a problem and we know that we've got a growing problem. And the essential thing is that we've tried to stop it now. We can never, we'll never get rid of the problem. There is no way of getting rid of all those resistance worms but we need to stop that process now. So, what should farmers start thinking about doing? What should they do differently? Well, farmers, I think we've really got to start using these products perhaps with um, a little more care than we have done. One of the things about antelmintics in, in, in sheep cattle production, even to some extent, horses have got a similar problem. We've got big problems in the equine world, is that they are relatively cheap and they're very effective. So a lot of the strategies we've been using have been to use quite a lot of antelmintic because that works, and there's no doubt historically it has worked. What we're really trying to say to them now is, look, we need to reduce the selection pressure here. We need to try and only use these products when it's necessary. When we do use them, we need to make sure we use them properly every time, so at, at, at the right dose rate, the right technique, so it really does kill as many worms as possible whenever we use them, and to think about how much pressure we're exerting. So there are certain times of year when there's a much higher proportion of the worm population in the sheep than on, than on the pasture. Fortunately in the UK, not many. 
and at those times using anthelmintic is highly selective. At other times when you're perhaps just drenching lambs on dirty pasture during the summer it's much less selective because a lot of the worm population is on the grass anyway and the proportion you're treating is relatively small. So it's just it's a question really of getting people to think differently about how they use these products and, and I guess we've all got to learn to respect them a bit more than perhaps we have done in terms of their value and their long-term effectiveness. For example, when we're buying sheep in now, we need to give them two treatments. One with a yellow drench, a levamazole type, and one with an ivermectin, and leave them to stand on concrete for 48 hours so that we try to eliminate all the benzimidazole resistant worms, which are the most common ones, coming onto the farms. So they're treated before they enter the fields. Well, I think the first thing to do would be to go to and talk to their vet. And I think from my point of view, a farmer who's um, uh, concerned about resistance, the first thing that I would do would be to have a word with the vet and to think this season about having a test to see whether or not you're actually beginning to see the first effects of resistance. And that would simply involve taking some samples at a set number of days after you've drenched your lambs this summer to see whether or not the product has worked properly. And that just begins the process then a little bit of, well, yes, we can start to detect the first signs of resistance. And that just gives people the, um, the impetus, the encouragement to then start looking at it in a bit more detail to see if they can use their atomintics a bit more strategically. We need to try to reduce the amount of worm we use. We need to take the proper advice. So we might say this year we will use one class, let's say the uh, uh, ivermectins, and next year we will use the levamazole class, and the following year we'll use the white trenches, as long as we haven't already got a resistance problem. So we need individual farmers to find out if they have a resistance problem. But within that process, there are certain worms which are susceptible to different drugs, such as nematodirus, which is one of the most significant, biggest problems we have in May and June. But we don't have a problem in that particular worm to white drenches. So it may be on a farm which has a anthelmintic resistant problem. We can still use those drugs on that farm in an effective and a therapeutic manner, but without just using it willy-nilly. One of the huge problems that we've had over the last 20 years is that drenches have been a commodity item. The argument has been, what is the cost? This is very cheap, you can use it all the time. And all that does is generates resistance. Farmers need to take advice now, whether it be, well, no, farmers need to take advice now, and it should be from vets, and it should hopefully not send them or cost them more. It should be an effort to reduce the amount of wormers they take, so that will effectively reduce the speed at which resistance continues to increase and hopefully produce them a more effective and consequently a more profitable flock. If nothing changes, if people carry on acting as they have done over the last 20 years, I mean, what could you see happening to the UK sheep industry? The way things were heading um, back in the early 2003-04 when we first embarked upon this, we were, we were saying, and I still believe, that we probably had something like 10 years left whereby we would have had reasonable worm control in the majority of the UK flock. The new group of Antelmintics will help that a great deal, but nevertheless we are still looking at a probably something like a 10 to 15 year timescale, I think, whereby we would get more and more of these farms where none of the wormers are working.